I've been thoroughly testing Blender 2.8 Beta and I thought it time to share my thoughts. I've used it to create 3D models, animated graphics and even a 3D animated short video series which I'm now sharing on YouTube. But there is one thing that greatly concerns me and it's related to 3D printing. Will I be switching to Blender 2.8? Stick around to find out. First up, let me be clear and I need to stress that I'm using a beta version of Blender 2.8. This is not the final version. Blender 2.8 has not been released yet, so things will change and issues may be resolved by the time the official version of Blender 2.8 releases. To give Blender 2.8 Beta a good workout, I decided to use it in a variety of different situations. I was mainly curious about its performance, in particular real-time rendered viewport performance using EV, rendering performance using cycles, and any real-time interface and animation performance increases across the board. I was also wondering how the interface shuffling, button relocation and rearranged keyboard shortcuts would affect my long-term embedded muscle memory and practices. Basically, was it going to be easy to get along with and easy to transition to as a long-time Blender user? First, the good. Compared to my long-time Blender 2.79 use, overall, I found Blender 2.8 to be a more polished, satisfying experience and it didn't take long to retrain my mind to accommodate all the newly assigned keys, shortcuts and menu relocations. Things like pressing Z to switch view modes took me back at first when a pie menu popped up instead of changing the draw style. But after a short while, it became natural and intuitive. It took me back to the way I used to work in Maya. I like the new layout and functionality but I'm consciously not getting too married to it as I know the interface is still in a state of flux and things may yet change. But overall, I'm enjoying the new interface experience. The general performance seems better too. Everything feels slicker and smoother and EV is a pleasure to use. To test Blender 2.8 performance and general usability, I created a little movie featuring this scared little robot. I'm turning this into a YouTube series and you can watch the first episode right here at scaredrobot.com. Make sure you include the dash. I used Blender 2.8 to design, model and rig the character as well as build out the set needed for the first episode. And I used EV to render, choosing the viewport render option for speed. So good not having to wait minutes for each frame to render. It's not perfect and you do have to accommodate some workarounds, but I'm really appreciating the time saving EV brings to the table. Cycles has also gained a significant advantage over 2.792 with the ability to render using both the GPU cores and CPU cores at the same time. It's a godsend and something I've dreamed of for a long time and it does make noticeable difference to render times. I have had to change the way I set up cycles with this new feature. In the past I'd set my performance sample size to around 256 by 256 when using the GPUs alone. But I'm consistently finding that this is too large for the CPU cores and they get left behind, resulting in the GPU cores sitting idle waiting for the CPU cores to catch up before moving on to the next frame. You're better off setting this value to 64x64 64 64 or even 32x32. 32 32. This way the CPU cores are finishing each segment quicker, allowing them to keep better pace with the GPU cores. On the usability front, I was initially a bit annoyed about the change from using layers to collections. I use layers a lot, but after getting my head around the collection system, it does make sense and I think I might actually prefer collections now. The ability to name a collection and see what's listed without having to open its contents is a distinct bonus. Overall, for animation, modeling and rendering, Blender 2.8 gets a big thumbs up. Now, the not so good. I'm finding that working in large scenes is generally good if you set your scene up with collections that you can toggle on and off. Perfect for animating a character in a scene. You don't need everything on display and hogging resources when you're focusing on just animating a single character. Each character could also be housed in its own collection for independent visibility. But I'm finding an issue where undos take much longer in large scenes in Blender 2.8. A lot longer than Blender 2.79. To the point where I'm forced to change the way I work and try to avoid making any undos at all. I'm hoping this is just a beta issue and will be resolved by the time the official version launches. And now to the bad. I'm so hoping this is a beta issue, because if this is not fixed, 
I will not be able to use Blender 2.8 for creating 3D printable files. I will have to stick with Blender 2.79. This is the issue. My trustworthy, reliable workflow, a workflow I've developed through long-term trial and error, is to model, then join or cut using booleans. In Blender 2.79, you have two options for Boolean operations, BMesh and Carve. I've thoroughly tested both options and I've found Carve to be completely reliable, producing solid 3D printable meshes and it's totally dependable. BMesh, on the other hand, i found to be the complete opposite and I never use it. The meshes it creates are fine for animation and rendering, but it creates too many errors for 3D printing. When I saw BMesh was now the only option in Blender 2.8, I became very concerned, but I thought, no, wait a minute, they may now have BMesh at a point where it comfortably replaces the carve option. So I thought I'd do a test. I decided to model the exact same thing in both Blender 2.79 and Blender 2.8, using carve in 2.79 and BMesh, the only option, in 2.8. Naturally, Blender 2.79 worked as usual, and I was able to export an STL which opened Define and Cura. But no matter what I did in 2.8, I could not get BMesh to solve correctly. I tried tweaking the settings, changing the modifier stack order, but no matter what I did, it just wouldn't work. Now I may be missing something here, and there may be a step that's new to 2.8 that I don't know about, but on the surface, I find BMesh unusable. I can't produce a printable STL using that Boolean modifier. Now it may be a case that Carve hasn't been added to 2.8 yet, and it's still on the way. I'm seriously hoping so. But if it doesn't get added, then when it comes to 3D printing, Blender 2.79 remains my only option. So in summing up, when it comes to animation and rendering, I will definitely be switching to Blender 2.8. It's just a nice place to be, and I enjoy working in that environment. But when it comes to 3D printing, I will be sticking with Blender 2.79. I totally need the Carve Boolean modifier. If they end up adding the Carve modifier to 2.8, then it's a done deal, and 2.8 will be the only 3D package I need. But until then, for 3D printing, it's 2.79 all the way. If you're in a similar situation, it might be worth downloading and setting aside a copy of Blender 2.79. You'll probably see my cursor moving in one direction, then back again when working in Blender in future videos, as I wrestle with my long-term muscle memory. Things that were at the bottom of the screen in 2.79, and now at the top, and the keyboard shortcut for deselecting all in 2.8, Alt-A, is actually the keyboard shortcut for play in Blender 2.79. So if you see the playhead starting playing in some of my videos, like the last one, that's the reason why. Okay, I think I've rambled on long enough. I hope this has been information you find useful. Thanks very much for watching. If you did find it useful, please give it a like. Helps me determine what content to create in the future. Have a great day, everyone and I'll catch you later.